welcome back to Apron Strings. <clears throat> it's been about a week, I think, since I've been here because we had an unwanted visitor in our house named COVID, and it's not a joke. It makes you feel like you've been running the longest race in your life and you was the last one in and you wore slap out. And it's hard to get your strength back. But I feel much better today. I don't have any fever. I'm still quarantined because of um, you have to wait so many days, but also Troy has COVID also, but he's doing great. Neither one of us have had it in our lungs. We're doing good. Every member of April's family has had COVID. Some of them are over it. The youngest one was the last one to get it, and he's still sick with it. <clears throat> but Linda from Linda's Pantry had texted me and wanted this particular recipe, and I thought, well, my goodness, if it's that hard to find on my uh, videos, I need to do another video of this cake because it's so quick and easy. It seems like this time of the year is when we have, you know, you want to have company over for a cup of tea and a piece of cake or it, it's just something about the entering into the holiday season that calls for fellowship with your friends. And this cake is so easy to make. You cook it, it takes 20 minutes. You ice it while it's hot and you have a, re a dessert ready to serve. Now, <clears throat> I told y'all the story on my other, the last time I videoed it. Jordan, the one that just got COVID, he's 15 now, but he was about two, and he loved this cake because he loves the icing, the cream cheese icing. So one day I was holding him, and the cake was sitting down on the counter, and I said, baby, Nana made you a cake. And I raised the foil up for him to look at it, and he said, oh, my God. And he got it up out of that icing right quick. So I do not like to hear people say, oh, my God. But that name has stuck in our family, and they call it the Oh My God Cake. But I'm just going to tell you, it's a very easy pineapple cake that's moist, takes the minimal ingredients, and it's a quick serve if you've got somebody stopping by. So let's get over here to the butcher block and y'all are going to have to make room for Monica and Randy because they said they've got their recliners sitting right up at the front where when I do another video, they'll be first in line. Y'all I've had, y'all have made my heart sing. I've had so many texts. A lot of you have my number from ordering aprons, um, emails asking how I'm doing, telling me you're praying for me, besides all the comments on the channel. And I want you to know it means so much to me. I feel like I've got a big old family hugging me and sending up prayers for me. And that means a whole lot. So I'm going to make this cake and I hope I can kind of get right back into my groove again, doing two or three videos a week. But I wanted y'all to know I'm here. I'm alive and well. The good Lord's kept his hand on me and I'm getting better every day. So I'm going to whip up this cake and get it in the oven, and then we're going to ice it. But I'm probably not going to taste of it for y'all because sweets aren't very good right now. But I'm going to show you what it looks like. So get on over to the butcher block and we'll get busy. Okay, y'all, I have already uh, sprayed my 9 by 13 pan with cooking spray. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to grease and flour it or anything. Just spray it with cooking spray. And then in your bowl, you're gonna, and you don't even have to use a mixer. How cool is this? Two cups of flour. One and a half cups of just granulated sugar. One teaspoon of baking soda. And I'm gonna take my uh, Swedish dough hook I'm just going to mix that around and try to incorporate it best I can. I just went mixed up good. And I ordered me some um, baking soda from my shore. It doesn't have aluminum in it, but they say the Rumford brand doesn't either. So if you're going to buy baking soda, try to look for that brand because it's a lot healthier for you. Okay, now the recipe, my original recipe, did not call for any salt, but I'm going to put just a pinch. I just don't like that oh-so-fresh taste that it has without any salt in it. Then you add one large can 
of crushed pineapple. And I think this is probably a 28 ounce can. Uh, it's the big one anyway. You add that. Stir that around. And folks, that's your liquid. This cake has no egg in it. Nothing but soda, salt, sugar, flour. And I'm going to add a little vanilla to it and your crushed pineapple. And it makes such a moist, good cake. Now, if you want to get real adventurous, you can take a banana and mash it up real good and stir it in here and add you just about a half a cup of coconut. And you've got something very similar to a hummingbird cake, all made in 20 minutes, ready to serve. So I've got this mixed, and I'm going to add just a little bit of vanilla, about a half a teaspoon probably. Just enough to add a little bit more flavor to it. It's kind of like onion and garlic powder. Most things need a little vanilla in them. And I'm just going to stir it, and then I'm going to get my uh, spatula there and see if, make sure I've got it blended well and scraped up from the bottom. Y'all see how easy that is? There's just nothing to it. And if you'll keep you a can of pineapple in your pantry and some cream cheese in your icebox and a stick of butter, you'll always have what you need to make this, this cake. Now I've got this ready to go in the oven. Let me get my pan. scraped out of there. I used to sell home interior. A lady that was my manager, one day mom and I went over to her house. She had invited us over and she served us this cake and I've been making it ever since. And my recipe box, it's called the Judy Adams cake. But it is a quick and easy pineapple cake. I have my June oven heated to 350. I'm going to put it in there and setting the timer for 20 minutes. And when I bring it out, I will have my icing ready. And you put it on there while it's hot. And as soon as you can cut it and stand to put a bite in your mouth, your cake is ready to go and to serve your guest. So let me get it done and I'll be right back in 20 minutes. That quick for y'all, show you what it looks like. Now I've got my 8 ounces of cream cheese and one stick of real butter and I'm going to put this in my microwave on the soften cycle just to soften it enough that I can blend it with a whisk and um, if I had a thought in time I'd have left it out for room temperature and then it's just easy to mix it but I'm going to soften it and get it ready to get the icing going here in just a minute. I was going to tell y'all about a surprise that came in the mail. You know, I told you that I was enjoying watching the Bread Beckers and that they have a store in Georgia that's been there for many years. Well, one of my viewers, Ladine Holder, surprised me with a package in the mail and she had gone home to visit. She's from Woodstock, Georgia. She bought me Sue Becker's uh, book on the essential homegrown flour. And let me tell you, this has all of the scientific information, uh, just tons of her wisdom and knowledge, and a lot of recipes, information about all the different grains, what you can do with them. I'm especially interested in making the uh, Ezekiel bread and the recipe for how much of everything that goes in it is in here. And I have that on my order for the next Azure drop that I pick up, which will be next week. And then I'm going to meal me some Ezekiel bread flour and make Ezekiel bread. And I'll be uh, filming that for y'all. But Ladine, thank you so much for your generous heart and for buying me the book. I will get real smart reading it 
and I'll probably get real fat using it, but I like surprises. Thank you very much. Okay, I've got about six minutes on my cake. Y'all, I used my little bendable OXO, put it in the microwave, softened my cream cheese and butter, and it's not hot at all. So I'm going to put it in my bowl. I rinse that same bowl out. I'm going to make my icing in it. What I'm going to do is, I got this at Goodwill, and it's got, it's bigger in here, and it's very sturdy. So I'm going to use my, uh, use it to mix my cream cheese and butter. And then I'll add my just granulated sugar, y'all. It's not uh, powdered sugar, confectioner sugar. You just use regular granulated sugar. I never have tried using confectioner sugar, so I don't know how it would turn out. I know this is still balling up in here. Make me a mess on the butcher block, but... I told y'all before, I know exactly how to clean up messes. This is just about mixed and blended. And you could use your hand mixer or your big mixer if you wanted to mess it up. But you don't need it because that stuff gets good and soft and all you have to do then is just stir it together. So as soon as my cake gets done in another little bit, y'all liable to hear that June oven dinging while I'm making my icing here. We'll be ready to ice it. And I wish I wanted some of it, but I don't. But I wanted y'all to have it for this season of giving and serving and sharing. It's a neat cake. If I hear that somebody's had a family member that passed away, I keep those throwaway 9x13 foil pans, and in nothing flat, I can fix one of these cakes, drop it off. If I have a friend that's sick, it's a quick and easy something to take to help out with their meals. So y'all need to think about the possibilities of how you can use it. If you need to take something to work for a potluck, they'll think you worked a long time and all you did was hop up that morning and put it on before you started getting dressed and it was ready to take to work, work in nothing flat. Y'all see how easy that is? Now I'm going to stir me a little bit of vanilla in it and then I'll be done and ready to put it on the cake. And I'm just going to eyeball it, just enough for a little flavor. I don't want it overpowered with the vanilla extract. Get it all stirred up in there and I'll be rubbing it on that cake in a minute. Now you can take that cake and make it into 12 cupcakes if you want to. It does make right at 12. Depends on how much you put in each little cup. But that's an idea um, of another way to use it. Okay, I'm just going to wait till I get it out of the oven and we'll be ready to ice it. Okay, y'all, I actually was wrong. The recipe calls for 25 minutes at 350, and it's just perfect. See, it's lightly browned. It springs back to the touch, and now it's time for us to get the icing on it. Okay, it's hot, and it's ready to melt this icing all over it. I like to just take it and kind of smear it two or three you know, the first, middle, and the end. That way it's not as hard to spread it everywhere because you want it all the way over to the edges. And you're not going to get it real pretty because it keeps melting on you, let me just tell you. But sometimes tasting good is more important than looking real pretty. And if you get it right up to the edges, that kind of seals it. And you can get a spreader if you want to use a spreader. And I can see that I didn't whip up 
all of the cream cheese. It's got a few little blobs, but that'll be all right. I guarantee you nobody's going to complain. Now sometimes, if the kids aren't going to be eating it, I'll sprinkle real finely chopped pecans on the top. Just because it's pretty. Yep, <clears throat> when I bring the camera over, y'all will see that you can look through it and see there's areas that's not as uh, covered. But you're not going to be able to make everything look covered because it keeps melting. And that's perfectly fine. Just going to tell y'all, if you haven't made this, you need to make it and see how easy it is. And I promise you, it'll be in your um, recipes that you use often because it always gets rave reviews. They can't believe how easy it is. I mean, I can have somebody call from town and, well, they used to do this often. They don't do it much anymore. And I hate the way our lives are now, but we thought we'd stop by. Well, by the time they get here, I can have a dessert ready to serve them. So, 25 minutes in the oven, I sit. I usually say it's a 30 minute cake because you mix it, you bake it 25 minutes and you ice it. So, what else can you do that quick that's absolutely a blue ribbon dessert? Y'all need to try it and see. Now, let me tell you something. If I hadn't had my cabinet stocked with just a few essentials, we'd have been in a pickle. Because you can't go to the store, you're not supposed to with COVID. Supposed to isolate. And you need to have some stuff that ain't real hard to cook because you don't feel like cooking. So y'all, my neighbor brought us a gallon of milk and she's so sweet. One evening they brought fajitas uh, for Troy and Jordan before they got COVID. And then another day she brought fried chicken with potatoes and gravy and rolls and green beans. I've just had help and I appreciate it. I had a lot of people want to know what they could do, but there really wasn't anything because you're not real hungry. But it's good to have stuff in your own pantry that like my chicken noodle soup has come in handy. That's what's tasted real good to me is my chicken noodle soup. So y'all don't forget to put a few extra things in your pantry. Be cautious. Don't live in fear and be a hermit and stay away from people because we all need each other. But uh, be wise with who you're around and how close you get to them and, you know, make sure uh, the people that you know well, how they're feeling and who they've been around. Because I've lost some friends to COVID. We're blessed we're going to recover, but I got word today of another friend that passed away from COVID. I lost my first cousin, um, another close friend, um, passed away yesterday, and it's just, it's not because people are old, a lot of them are younger people, it's because this disease is mean. So the best thing to do is trust the good Lord, ask Him to put a hedge around you and protect you and if you happen to come in contact with it, walk you through it, see you safe on the other side, heal your body, protect your loved ones. That's what I've been doing and I think it's working because we're getting well. So y'all keep praying for us. Take care of yourself. Get a few extra things in your pantry because uh, besides the condition of the world, you never know when you, as the one that's the provider of the food in the kitchen, might get down and it'll be a whole lot easier to fix something. Hope y'all will try the cake. It is delicious. And let me know what you think about it. Some of y'all have been just letting my videos run while I've been off. And you might have run across the recipe. But now it's right up front again. Y'all can get it and make you one. Make you a copy of the card, even if you're not going to use it right this now. Put it where you can get to it, because you're going to want to use it during this upcoming season. It's just wonderful. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. And I'll do my best to be right back here at the butcher block in a few days with something else good. Now, I've got a couple of pumpkin things I want to do, because we're in the pumpkin season, and we need some pumpkin stuff. So we'll have a good pumpkin treat coming up. 
and it's one that I've shared on my channel before and I've shared with friends. But when I got the recipe, my friend had to buy the recipe because the bakery couldn't keep up with the orders, so they started selling the recipe. And I'm sure it's all over the internet now, but that's where I got it. So we're going to have that one in a few days too. So y'all hurry on back, get your chair right up close, and be ready because I'm getting ready to go. Okay, I wanted to show y'all the cake. And you see where you can kind of see through it here? It's because it melted, but oh my goodness, it's still delicious when uh, you cut it to eat it.